Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Ann Gonzalez. Who is uh, sitting in for Andy Bates, and you're also my guest. So <laughs> I'm co hosting myself. You're co hosting yourself, I think. I think that's how that works. All right. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I don't know. You know, really, I'm over there in that chair, so. And I actually turned all the mics on today. That was impressive. That's awesome. I know. And I didn't, well, I didn't say what day it was. Today's Tuesday. <laughs> it is April 9th. I'm really bad at dates. That's all right. <laughs> it's like my legacy. <laughs> I never know what day it is. Um, so you are a manager of short-term training and engagement with the LCMS Office of International Mission. That is correct. Nicely long title. Yeah, well... Um long story on how that came to be but basically <laughs> my role is once short-term volunteers commit to serving I walk them through the process from like the minute that they commit through deployment to serve and then on the back end to help to brief them and process their experience sure how long does that process take does it vary depending on where they're going uh it more varies on when they apply <laughs> and get placed um so it can take anywhere from two weeks in a really extreme case oh wow yeah we have we have an accounting volunteer who literally like just got placed Holy last moly. week and he's going in a couple of weeks at the end of april but that was to fill an urgent need sure. um in the in the regional office so mm -hmm. yeah we make it happen right. um <laughs> I, ideally it usually um maybe is more of like a six month process because to, to adequately prepare there's a lot of pieces to that puzzle and sure. so we want to give people the time to do some reading and learning and and take care of the logistical details and just all sorts of things like that um so yeah 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 so we're uh we're we're uh, giving people an idea of um of, of what it takes maybe to be prepared yeah. to be on the mission field if you're thinking about uh going on a short-term team um, or, or you already are committed to doing a short-term trip this summer um maybe some of the things to make sure boxes to make sure you've yes. checked yes. uh to make and sure that, you're safe and 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 you have uh, the best possible time and come yes. home <laughs> yes and this applies regardless of who you're serving with sure. of course we love people to come and serve directly with the we LTMS do. but there are a number of registered service organizations that do great work with international um, locations as mm -hmm. well so yeah um, one of the things is of course to make sure that you have adequate insurance mm -hmm. and this is not the most fun part of my job I've <laughs> spent Does more anybody, well I guess people who work in insurance love insurance I but... don't know but I've, <laughs> I've, I've spent more time reading insurance policies than I ever really wanted to um, but the reason it's important is that stuff happens mm -hmm. right so and usually when people think about travel insurance, they think about insuring the cost of their flights or mm -hmm. their arrangements and things like that. And depending on your financial situation, that may be an important piece of the puzzle. But in my opinion, the most important piece is insurance, insuring against emergencies, basically. So mm -hmm. medical insurance and evacuation insurance um, are just key pieces that you've got to have in place. I, I will not leave the country without it anymore, <laughs> um, in part because earlier this year we got to see it in action where we had a volunteer who was injured on a team and we had to evacuate her. Mm -hmm. um, and so I learned a lot in that process about both that it's it's not a quick process. It's not like they send an airplane today and pick you up. And, right. You know, it took the better part of a week to mm -hmm. make all the arrangements to get her out of country and it, into a U.S. hospital. Sure. Um, but it also um, is so important because there's already a long list of, of challenges when you're dealing with a medical evac. Mm -hmm. You don't want the question of now who's going to write the $70,000 <laughs> check sure. to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah, so so the insurance uh, it gives you some peace of mind. Uh, Correct. You won't have to worry about if something should happen. Hopefully, nothing ever happens. Correct. But this uh, this was my first time dealing with this in the in the two and a half years that I've served at the LCMS, um, and so the, the the statistical chances of it happening to one person are, are very very low. Sure. But over time, we we do see I things mean, yeah. happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had before my time, we had a, a pastor who was serving in Poland who literally slipped in the mud and threw out his knee. And, <laughs> of and, all the things. Of all the things, yeah. <laughs> but I don't think he wound up being medically evac, but he did have to be treated in country and stabilized and, and mm -hmm. you know, assessed for whether he could safely fly home. Sure. Um, so, yeah, so that's a, that's just 
make sure you have insurance. Yeah. Um, and 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 make sure if you have any chronic health conditions. Well, two things. One. Make sure you understand the limitations of the pre-existing conditions clause on the insurance. Oh boy, everyone loves. This. Yeah, I know it's <laughs> super fun. Um, but different policies have different different uh, look back windows. Um, mm. One policy that we work with has a, a sixty day window, and another one has a three year window. So wow, that's important to understand and talk with your your hosts or your mission trip provider about mm-hmm. if they're the ones buying your insurance. Um, the other piece is make sure you talk to your doctor. I mean, this is true across the board, but especially with chronic health conditions. People whose health conditions are well managed in the U.S. tend to forget that they have a serious chronic health condition. Yep, I understand that. <laughs> and so, um, but then you get on a plane for 12 hours, your your sleep is off, your food is off, your your daily routines are off and you're being exposed to different heat or, um, you know, heat or cold or whatever. Sure. And, and that can really cause people's, um, normally well-managed conditions <laughs> to flare up. Right. And so it's not an automatic, like no go, but make sure that you're having that conversation with your doctor on whether or not you are in a place to serve. If you've you know, and if and if in the process your medications change or there's you know changes in your health, you need to be talking with your hosts about that to make sure that um, it's a, it's still a good fit. Sure, yeah. I mean, safety is is I, it might be a boring talk, but it's 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 you know you want to you you just want to be safe. You don't want to have to worry about exactly. any of these things when exactly. when you're going to serve, especially on a, on a short term thing. Because exactly. if, if your short term thing gets messed up, that's just it's just it's not good for anybody. Yeah. And I mean, I know that some people go out it with the attitude of like, oh, but I'm serving the Lord, so if I die, I don't care. But one of our host missionaries has said to me repeatedly. Yes, but if somebody dies on my watch, like that's going to impact me, like her and the field. Yes, the, and the everybody field, you're serving the with. church, yeah. the the local church. Um, you know the the mental health of your ho- right. hosting missionaries. You don't sure. want to, you know, do those sorts <laughs> of things to them. Um, and that's of course an extreme example, but right. um, you know. God also calls us to be wise with <laughs> with ourselves and the gifts and resources that he's given us. Yeah, yeah. Be proper stewards of, exactly. of what we have. Yeah. Exactly. So insurance is really important to, to make sure everything, all your bases are yep, covered there. Yep. Um, what are some other uh, some other things that people maybe overlook or, or good things to, to make sure you have on your to-do list? Sure. So one thing that I think is easy to get lost in the str- shuffle is that your cultural and your spiritual preparation are just as important as the logistical Mm. preparation of like, we need to raise money, we need to buy tickets, all those sorts of things. And so for us, we regularly recommend, um, so we have some recommended reading and that varies a little bit by field and what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Um, But taking the time to understand a little bit about the culture that you're going into and about just some of the challenges and pitfalls of you want to help, but maybe giving money isn't the best option because it creates a culture of dependency in that place then. And that Mm -hmm. actually harms the local culture, economy, church, you know, those kind of things. Um, And then, you know, just, just taking the time to be in God's word, to be regular in worship and all those sorts of things. Because if that's what you're going to do, like that's, (laughs) that's, that's really key. Um, And of course there are things that you will not be prepared for. You will be, you know, there's uh, still put, culture shock. There's still culture shock, <laughs> and things. But at least if if you can prepare yourself to sort of understand a little bit more about the culture, and also just understand that there will be things that you don't understand about why you're being told to do things a certain way mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but you are there as a guest, and so respecting your hosts and and trusting that they know what they're doing, yeah. even though it seems completely foreign to you right well because it probably Cause it is. is yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well and so much of that is is also um I don't, I don't know if there's any training that goes into this but understanding that that you're, if you're going into somebody else like just when some, somebody comes here to the u.s and things are really strange and they may not understand why we do things a certain way it's the same thing yeah when we go overseas to somewhere else having that open mind um and and knowing that just because we do something in america a certain way right. um it may be completely different in a different country and that's it's okay. It's their yes. culture. <laughs> yes, in, indeed. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's a that's a big component to just 
being sure. ready. What about language training? So if you can learn to say a few words <laughs> in the local language, that's great. Everybody, so when I was in college, I had a, a professor who had been a missionary. Actually, I think in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> um, I could be wrong about that. But I remember this really stuck with me. He said, there's two things that are important for mission work. Speak the language and eat the food. Mm. And everybody knows that learning a new language is hard, but they also know that everybody eats. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you can learn a little bit of the local language and be able to greet people or, mm -hmm. you know, say God bless you or things like that, um, that's great, but it's not as key unless you've been told that that's a key part of your service. Sure. Um, in a lot of teams, in some of our teams, they actually teach English, and so yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, some of our volunteers work with um, translators, so like on Mercy uh, Medical teams, mm -hmm. they have a translator. The other challenge with trying to learn the local language in many places is which language do you learn? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so, for example, with Mercy Medical Teams, mm -hmm. you might have a country where they've got a national language that many people speak, but not everybody, and then you'll have local mm -hmm. languages. So, for example, when I went to Togo on a Mercy Medical Team, Togo is French-speaking because it was a French colony. Right. So educated people that have had the chance to go to many years of school speak French, mm -hmm. but the area where we were serving in, the local language is MOBA. Mm -hmm. And so I don't even know if you, I mean, I'm sure there's a resource somewhere to, to learn to say some sure. things in MOBA, <laughs> but just um, sometimes that's a, a challenge of, of knowing which which language to speak. Yeah. Because um, then even on that team, I think we had somebody come who the, the translators were like, uh, I think they're speaking a different dialect. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so yeah, but being able to greet people in their own language is always yeah. appreciated. Yeah, sure. I mean, this took not, not a missionary thing, but when I went overseas on a choir tour, it was the same thing. We went to France. And so, you know, we learned a, a variety of different phrases just so we could at least, you know, speak in French first. Right. Um, even if we couldn't hold a conversation at, right. by any means, um, you know, at least if, if you greet someone in their own language, at least uh, it's it's that, that effort to, yes. to bridge across that cultural gap. Yes. You may have to continue in English or or you know, somewhat of a weird sign. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and uh, I hadn't thought about eating the food, but so much of culture revolves around food. Yes, that, indeed. That if you join people for their meals and, and eat what they've prepared and, for you. And that can be a challenge sometimes it because it will be, it will be different. It is not what um, we eat here. <laughs> you know, I, I served longer term in Taiwan and, and the first time I was presented with a whole fish, I was like, oh. How does that work? It's looking at me. <laughs> um, but I, I got used to it, although I never reached the point of eating the fish head. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know if I could do that. Well, that's all right. Well, uh, so we have some great tips, uh, insurance, cultural preparation, spiritual preparation, really great things to just keep in mind if, if you're and going to, to your host and listen to your hosts and eat their food. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, that's all the time we have for the coffee hour today. Ann Gonzalez, who is my guest and also co-host manager of short-term training and engagement with the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. You're listening to the coffee hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the coffee hour and KFUO radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Oh, Christ for you, anytime, anywhere.